Welcome back to Visual 3D Basics, and in this third unit, we're going to be talking about how to report your data. So far, we have focused this series on creating a biomechanical model for our subject as they walk through our lab. And, and as part of this, we have used both kinematic, so based purely on the motion capture system, and kinetic data, based on force plates. All of this data ends up in Visual 3D in this very nice hierarchy, and we've looked a little bit at how to look through our data, how to graph it quickly, compare it, see where we're at frame by frame, but frankly, it's not the best way to hand the data to somebody who is not familiar with Visual 3D and especially somebody who doesn't have a Visual 3D license is going to have trouble looking at what you have accomplished so far. So the focus of this entire unit is to get that data into a format that can be shared with anybody, either printed or saved in a PDF file that could be stored in a database, in a hospital, handed to a patient, a curing physician, or given the results to an athletic trainer. However, and whoever you are trying to get the data to, in this unit, we're gonna talk about how to do that. So, you'll find that there is included data for this specific unit that is a little bit different from what we have worked on so far, primarily because we've gone ahead and processed it a little bit, added an extra file for you to illustrate some extra features in Visual 3D, but the concepts of everything we did are already covered in the previous units of Visual 3D Basics. But just to make sure that you're familiar with everything that we're going to work with, let's go ahead and open Visual 3D and the file that was included with this unit, and we'll go through and show you everything that we have done. So as you can see, we already have motion files loaded in here, and they are all associated with a static file. Now, two of these motion files are the same files that we have worked on in the previous units. And the static file is the same as the one associated with them previously. The reason we have three is because we just wanted to show you something that is actually quite common, and we will talk about how to differentiate this third file from the others, and how to deal with the slight problem that we'll show you in a moment. If we go over to signals and events, you can see we have all files selected, but we want to review them one at a time. So here we have our first file, which is exactly as the one we had worked with previously, where our subject is walking through the lab very normally. And then we have gate three, which you see is what was previously named gate two, exactly the same. If we look at gate two, you see it is slightly different, largely because it is facing the other direction. Not actually a problem, as our joint angles, joint moments are relating one segment to another, and our inverse kinematic uh, constraints that we created in the previous unit will work on this as well, because the pelvis is free to move in any way with respect to the lab. So that's not actually the difference. What you do see is right here, we have foot contact on two force plates. This means that we can't get data from a single force plate to generate the kinetics for the right leg. Now, thankfully, in this trial, so we do not have any contact from the left foot with either of these force plates, but having the right foot contact on both force plates poses a bit of a problem. So the immediate first thing to do would be to just scrap this file and record another. 
which is a totally normal practice that many labs choose to do. And frankly, it does make your life easier. So if that is how your lab is working, there is no problem with it. However, having worked considerably with neurological patients, I know from direct experience, and you may as well, that performing a single gait trial could be very taxing for our patients. So just scrapping a file might not actually be the best solution in those situations. So maybe we can't use the kinetic data from this, but we could use the kinematic data. And actually, if you follow along to the end of this unit, in the last section, we are actually also going to talk about how we can still salvage this data, even for the kinetics. But let's start out by dividing our data into the data that we will use for kinematics and data that we will also use for kinetics. The way we are going to do that, heading right back over here to our workspace, and yes, the workspace tab, although so far we've essentially only used it to see what files are loaded into our workspace, it does have additional purposes. What we want to do is create a series of tags to organize our data. So now that we've seen a little bit of what we have in our data, we want to organize it based on the kinematic, which is all of the data, and the kinetic data. You see this handy little button here it says add new file tag. So if I click it, I'm going to call this kinematic. As far as our kinematic data goes, we want to select one, two, and three gate trials. We do not want to use the static trial for our kinematics, although we did use a static trial for our joint angle offset correction. We're not going to include it for our kinematic trial data in our report. We are also going to add another tag called kinetic. And as we've already seen, the kinetic data is going to be for gate one and gate three. So we're only going to look at gate one and gate three for kinetic data, such as joint moments. So this is a simple way that we can go about organizing our data. Of course, we have much more information about tags in other tutorials here at BassetBiomechanics.com. You can check out the Visual 3D Expert Builder course, and you can also check out individual tutorials in our tutorial series. But this should be enough of an intro for you to start to understand how to use tags, which we will use in other chapters of this unit. Other things we would like to point out in this chapter is that in signals and events, we have under link model based, an original folder and a processed folder. In the processed folder, we have left ankle angle, which you already see graphed, the left ankle moment, hip angle, hip moment, knee angles and moments, and all of that is true also for the right side. We didn't want to get into it too much uh, in the previous unit, uh, so right now you find all of these in the process folder under link model based, where previously found it under derived. That is a pipeline feature which we will start talking about in the next unit. But for now, you see we already have all of this data in this folder, and this is the data that we want to go about graphing. So our left ankle angle and our right ankle angle have already been corrected for offset, and similarly, we also have our hip angle and our hip moment and our knee angle and our knee moment that we want to include in our graph. In the next chapter, we will 
start creating those first graphs so you can see the mechanisms that you would go about to create whatever graphs that you want.